In today's video, we're going to look at everything you need to know so you can master terror raids in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But before we get into today's video, I have to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor, FlexiSpot. FlexiSpot are committed to ergonomic solutions for office and at home. And with their height adjustable desks, they give a whole new freedom to how you can have a better and healthy experience with whatever you are doing. If you're like me and you sit for hours at a desk, either gaming, working, editing videos or whatever you're doing, you'll know how uncomfortable it can get after sitting in the same position for hours. Not to mention how unhealthy it is for your posture and just general well-being. So if you are interested in upgrading your setup at home to get yourself the freedom that you need with a standing desk, make sure to check out the FlexiSpot link down in the description below. Now, Scarlet and Violet have been out a little while now and even if you think you know everything about raids, this isn't going to be a video that's just saying use Iron Hands or Belly Drummer's Umarel or Annihilate. Yes, these Pokemon are exceptionally good for the most part, but in this video we're going to go over everything I think you will need to know to help you optimize your raid play and build for specific terror raid bosses. Terror raids alongside shiny hunting is probably one of the biggest post game features in Scarlet and Violet, offering exclusive item drops like Herba Mystica, ability patches, terror shards, candies and an array of high level Pokemon with a multitude of different terror types. Terror raids all come in under different difficulty ratings ranging from 1 star to 7 stars with 1 star terror raids being the easiest is going right up to seven star raids that are the most difficult that you can come across through normal play in game the highest star rating you're going to come across is a six star terror raid the seven star terror raids are going to be only accessible through special online events that we see run once at the moment every month now like we've mentioned the rating determines the difficulty of the star ratings if you're going into a one star terror raid the level of the pokemon in that raid is going to be around level 12. if you're going into a two star terror raid it's going to be level 20. three star raid will be 35. four star raid will have a level 45 pokemon and a five star raid will have a level 75 pokemon six star terror raids will have a level 75 pokemon we'll get into the differences there between a five and a six star in a moment and the seven star terror raids will have pokemon that are going to be leveled up to 100 to access different tiers of terror raids the higher raids will be unlocked depending on your progress through your game one and two star raids will be unlocked from the beginning of your playthrough three star raids will be unlocked after you get your third gym badge four star raids are unlocked when you get your sixth gym badge and five star raids are unlocked after you see the end credits roll after completing all three storylines in game six star raids can be unlocked after you beat the ace academy tournament and speak to jack after this and beating roughly 15 more terror raids jack will call again and tell you about the six star terror raids that are now appearing in the paldea region from this point on you'll be able to access six star terror raids although they will only appear once per day on top of this the terror raid bosses are made more more difficult by a number of factors one is by multiplying their hp number and just to give you context on this for instance one and two star raids will give the terror boss a five times multiplier on their current hp stat three star raids will give an eight times multiplier to their hp four star raids will give a 12 times multiplier to their hp and five star raids will give a 20 times modifier to their hp stat six star raids will give a 25 times modifier on their base hp stat which is actually based off a level 90 pokemon rather than the 75 which they are when you're going in and beating them and seven star raids will give a modifier of 30 times their base hp throughout every terror raid there will also be a point where the raid boss will disrupt the battle even further with its own additional effects nullifying all effects on their side of the field meaning any stat modifiers like stat drops they've received will be then nullified taken away and all their stat drops will be reset any stat boosts that they receive though will still stay nullifying all effects on your side of the field and this includes abilities now they will nullify abilities only for one turn but all of the stats that you have gained up to that point in the terror raid battle will be removed all your stats will be reset and the final thing is that each terror boss at some point in the terror raid will throw up a shield now the shield will reduce damage that it takes from any incoming attacks until that shield is broken the shield can go up randomly throughout a battle depending on the raid boss you are facing although most terror boss pokemon normally activate their shield when the terror boss's hp reaches about the halfway mark the following is 
a breakdown of damage you will deal once this shield is up so you get a better idea of the damage you can do when that shield is in effect now if you aren't terrestrialized at this point and the shield goes up you're only going to be doing 20 percent of the original damage you would have been dealing if you are terrestrialized and you are using a move but it's not the same type as your terrestrialization you will only be dealing 35 percent of the total damage that you would have otherwise been dealing if the shield wasn't active and if you are terrestrialized and you are using a move that's the same type as your terrestrialization you will only be doing 75 percent damage of the total damage that you would have been doing without the shield in effect also when a shield is up the terror boss will not be affected by any status moves i.e fake tears thunder wave or sleep powder etc although moves like acid spray that have a secondary effect to lower a target pokemon's special defense by two stages will still work now once the shield has been removed the raid boss will then be affected by status moves and drops once again from moves like sleep powder from fake tears but as long as that shield is in effect you will not be able to affect it with any of these types of attacking options so as you can see there are a lot you have to deal with as a player to beat any terror raid boss the hp modifier stat wiping and shield defense make it a difficult task and there is also one more thing to consider you have to manage all of this and defeat the terror boss before your raid timer runs out the raid timer will slowly run down in real time throughout a terror raid battle not stopping for text animations or move animations and on top of this if your pokemon gets knocked out it will further reduce the timer with a penalty in a solo raid when playing offline only you as a player will be penalized with this timer reduction none of your random npc pokemon who have joined the raid will be issued this penalty if knocked out although when you're playing online with actual players each player who is knocked out will reduce the timer making it a lot more challenging and one of the reasons why online raids need to be approached slightly differently with builds and strategies so just saying it now don't join raids when you're just starting out in your game especially the higher rated ones if you haven't got the pokemon that are leveled up trained up ready to go into these five and six star terror raids it's not a good idea your teammates are going to have to carry you and eventually it'll probably mean they end up losing the raid just be patient train your pokemon up follow this guide to the end do all the things that we're talking about here and then you'll be prepared a little bit more for going on and doing online terror raids now for these penalties with the timer when your pokemon's first knocked out you're going to receive a penalty of five seconds also at the same time the timer in the raid battle will decrease by a significant chunk on top of this the second time your pokemon gets knocked out you will receive a 10 second penalty and the third time you're knocked out will be a 15 and if you get to that point and you're knocked out for a fourth time it will be a 20 second penalty now with all of these things going against you in a terror raid battle you have to think well what have we got on our side well there are a few things that we do have to utilize in terror raid battles and we're going to go over those next one feature players do have on their side to make terror raids a little bit easier to manage is the cheer functions throughout each terror raid battle every player receives three cheers that they can opt to use every turn opposed to attacking which can grant all attacking pokemon Pokemon certain advantages on the field. The three options are go all out, which gives all Pokemon an attacking boost of 1.5 or occasionally a two times boost to attack and special attack. Hang tough, which gives all attacking Pokemon a 1.5 or occasionally a two times boost to defense and special defense. And then heal up, which removes all static conditions on all attacking Pokemon and returns a random portion of HP to all active Pokemon on your side of the field. It's worth noting that the cheer boost for attack and defense do not stack once you have used this modifier using another one will not increase the attack or defense any further so on this basis especially if you are in an online raid it's only worth one of the players using a single cheer for the rest of the party any additional ones used in the same or subsequent turns is a wasteful use of your resources these cheer effects will normally wear off after roughly three to four turns if all players are attacking although this can vary and once the effects have subsided additional cheers can be used used again to obtain the lost boosts the heal function is a little more random again when used it will alleviate all status conditions for all attacking pokemon and recover a certain percent of hp from all of the raid battles i have done there doesn't seem to be any consistency with this and can range from 25 percent recovery 50 percent recovery or even 75 percent hp recovery when it's used now it's not mandatory to use the cheer functions in your raid battles but they are very useful to take advantage of considering that the stat 
boosts that you get for attack or your defenses aren't removed when the terror raid boss nullifies all stats on your side of the field or when you faint. These effects do stay in existence, so when you return to the field, you've still got those boosts until they actually wear out. They're not affected by these outside criteria, so utilizing them when you have the opportunity to, especially online, is definitely advisable. Now, with the basic mechanics out of the way, we'll take a quick look at how best you can prepare for terror raids. Firstly, make sure whatever Pokemon you use are set to level 100. Five and six star terror raids will be set at level 75, with the multiple buffs on top of this, so having as high level Pokemon as possible against them is most optimal. Make sure you hyper train your Pokemon to ensure their stats are maximized, and make sure you EV train your Pokemon as well to take advantage of even more stat points. If you need any help with how to hyper train your Pokemon, level them up quickly or EV train them, please check out the guides that we've got on the channel covering all of these topics which you can utilize to make this an easy and simple step. Now with all of that out of the way, the next thing that you really need to keep in mind come down to basically two things when going in against five, six and seven star terror raid. One of those is knowing the Pokemon's terror type, knowing the weaknesses of that specific terror type and then look at the base typing of that Pokemon and what attacks it generally uses and what what types those attacks are. Now let's take a minute to mention there is nothing wrong of course with rocking up to any offline raid with a good stuff's Pokemon like Iron Hands, Belly Drum Azumarill or Annihilate which can dominate most raids with their quick setup and sheer power. But this won't always work every time. So this is why I'm going over these steps in this video today to hopefully help optimize your view on this and how you approach building for specific terror raids. Now, for an example, Annihilip is a ghost and fighting type. Its most common moves it will use in a terror battle will be Rage Fist, the ghost type attack and close combat, a fighting type attack. And for this example, let's say Annihilip has a terror type of fairy. So looking at the options you have, yes, Steel hits Fairy for super effective damage. That's the first thing we're going to outline. But if you bring a Steel type, you're also going to be hit for super effective damage from Annihilate's close combat attacks, which is going to make this raid extremely difficult when it doesn't necessarily need to be. So another option is using the Fairy type's other weakness, which if we look on the type chart is Poison. So Poison hits Fairy for super effective damage. It also resists fighting, uh, whilst only taking neutral damage from ghost type attacks. So when we look at it overall, the Poison typing is a much more preferable typing to go in and build with against this specific terror raid battle. Then it's just about identifying a specific Poison type Pokemon that would fit the criteria for this specific raid. Something like Dragalge would be an excellent choice for this raid when looking at our options available in the Paldea decks. And these steps can be applied to any terror raid for helping you identify certain Pokemon that are always going to give you an immediate advantage against these stronger terror raid bosses. As well as this, when identifying a Pokemon, it's always good to try and look for ones that fit your criteria with good setup options. As you'll be facing high level Pokemon in these raids with a number of buffs, having options to modify your own stats to hit opponents harder, and cutting down the time needed to complete these raids against the timer is a good thing to utilize. When we identify Dragalge, the first thing I would look at are its attacking options, like Sludge Bombs, so we know we've got a good attacking option here, noting which attacking stat it comes off, and then looking if Dragalge then has any special attacking modifiers like Nasty Plot, Calm Mind, or Quiver Dance. In this case it doesn't, but it does actually get access to Acid Spray, and although you aren't boosting your own special attack using the move Acid Spray, you can use it to reduce the special defense of the Terror Boss, and because it is a secondary effect that reduces that special defense stat, you know it's not really going to be affected by the shield either, so even if the shield goes up, you can still reduce the special defense of the Terror Boss Pokemon when using this attack. And although it's not boosting your attack, it is essentially in the same way powering up your attacks by reducing their special defense, meaning it's going to cut down the time it takes to knock this Pokemon out and really expedites the amount of damage you can do with your attacking options. So hopefully by adopting these kind of principles that we've just outlined here, when you're looking at a Terror boss, what its base typing is, its attacking options, and then what its terror typing are to identify a good option to take into these terror raids and make building Pokemon something that is a bit simpler to do and gives you a lot more success. Now, a lot of principles that you take into solo raiding can be 
implemented onto online raids, but there are some slight differences and important ones to keep in mind. Like we've already mentioned in online raids, every player who gets knocked out receives a timer penalty. There is no room for other players to carry another in these scenarios. Literally every player in a terror raid battle online will need to pull their weight. With this said, it's probably not the best idea to get annoyed or rage at other players who have joined random terror raids with you online. Even if they are the ones that make you lose the terror raid, you have to remember that the system that we're using isn't really super helpful. We can't communicate with other players that we've joined a terror raid with, so there's no way to kind of formulate a game plan in the terror raid itself or advise you use this move, I'll use this move. The system itself is pretty flawed. And also you've got to remember that there are a lot of different levels of knowledge, you know, with players coming into this game. You might be brand new to the game coming in, wanting to join in online and have a bit of fun. Whereas you don't have the knowledge base like someone like yourself, who probably knows a lot more about raids than your kind of average Joe coming in, just playing Scarlet and Violet, having a bit of fun. So it's best to give these people a little bit of slack. It's going to be something that you're just going to have to deal with online. Hopefully though, with this sort of video going out and the countless other content creators that are covering these topics it will eventually bring the skill level up of your average player to a good point where you're not having these experiences with terror raid battles online and i think just having this attitude going into online raids if you're doing them with randoms it's probably going to make it a way more enjoyable experience for everyone but if you're wanting more specific partners going into terror raids online and you're wanting to do strategies with fellow players then join Discord groups and connect with other players that are doing raids all the time. You can join our Discord group for our community. There's a bunch of friendly people on there and they will go in with you and play and do strategies and all that kind of stuff, as well as a bunch of other Discord groups that you'll be able to find online that are continually farming terror raid battles. And if you're interested, the link to our Discord is, will be in the description. Now, options that you're wanting to look at for going specifically more online raid battles than doing solo raids are gonna be based around moves that are more beneficial to a team as a whole rather than you as an individual so not really looking directly at something like belly drum which is predominantly better in a solo situation not to say it can't be used in an online situation but the moves that you're going to really want to try and incorporate on your pokemon for online raids are going to benefit the whole team as a party things like light screen and reflect are great options if you've got a spare slot on one of your raid pokemon then you can just slip in light screen it might be really beneficial for you and your teammates it protects everyone that is on your side of the field from taking big special attack damage. Same can be said about Reflect. It can reduce the physical type damage that you and your team are taking. And I think it's about finding the right balance between having a good offense and some good defense as well, where it not only benefits you, but benefits your partnering players as well. Things like we've already mentioned in this video, Acid Spray is a great option. Screech is another one that you can utilize, especially for your more physical oriented partners that you can lower the defense stat on the Terror Raid boss, and then they can hit it for bigger and harder damage. Helping Hand is another really nice option where you can boost a partner's attack for that specific turn. And healing and restoring moves like Life Dew or Heal Pulse are really nice options as well that you can incorporate into your Pokemon. That's gonna benefit everyone as a team unit when you're going and playing online. If you're wanting to go down a very dedicated support route, Pokemon like Umbrian and Blissey or Chansey are great options here. They're very defensively well built. They're gonna be able to take a multitude of attacks and they have a surplus of support options that you're gonna be able to utilize that your teammates are gonna love you for. Now, if you'd like to see some specific support Pokemon builds for Terror Raids and specifically going online, we do have a video on the channel where we cover up to 20 20 Pokemon for supporting roles. You can check that out up in the top right hand corner now and it'll also be linked down in the description as well. If you're looking for more solo builds of course then you can check out our other videos on the channel that we have done again we've covered another video where we've got over 20 Pokemon for solo building as well as one-offs like the Annihilip, the Iron Hands and the Azumro builds that we've covered as well as everything else that we do cover in regards to best builds for Terror Raids in Pokemon. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. You want to stay up to date with all of the most recent builds that we do here on the channel. 
So I think that about does it for today's video. We've been covering terror raids on the channel for quite a while now. The games have been out over three months, but I wanted to have an all encompassing video that went through each step by step stage of a terror raid and how best to approach it with the additional information that we've had recently about some of the aspects and mechanics that work in the background in a terror raid. Hopefully it really helps you understand how to approach terror raids as well as having a better understanding of how some of these mechanics do work and affect you as a player in game. If you've enjoyed the video, please drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with more Pokemon Scarlet Violet content, as well as our Terror Raid content that we do here all the time on the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll hopefully see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves, and bye-bye.